Today we're talking to Nick Bailey, who's an engineer in both electronics and mechanical, and an inventor. He's invented everything from robotic circuit board manufacturing systems to full e-bikes. Um, so Nick, your latest project, Battery IQ. We kind of think it's set to revolutionize the ownership of e-bikes by good battery management, longevity of those batteries, and safety. We'll talk about how Battery IQ works in a bit, and also what tips you'd give for battery health and longevity. So let's get started. What is Battery IQ and why do we and the industry need it? Good, well, first of all, this is, this is one of the Battery IQ things. So it's a little tiny circuit board. Um, this goes inside your battery, but it could be pretty much any lithium battery. This takes the place of the battery management system that's already in there. So one of the things this board has is a little radio module that means it can transmit the battery safety status to your phone and also to wall scanners. So there's a lot of energy in batteries and what we don't want is the battery to have a dramatic problem without actually warning you first that there might be a problem. So the, the goal of Battery IQ is to give people visibility of what's happening to their battery well in advance of there being any actual problem with it. But then when it comes to you know more safety issues, you know, this sort of thing that we are seeing in the mm -hmm. media now, you know, everybody's talking about you know, battery fires, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and this is what battery IQ is addressing. It's it's a preemptive sort of service um, app as it were. Um, but what causes you know batteries to go wrong? And, and catastrophically in the worst case scenario. Yeah if we go into the, like the more technical details, a battery is, is a kind of sandwich of different layers and things going wrong is when one of those layers fails and all the energy in the battery gets released in a very short period of time so the whole thing catches fire. But th that damage tends to occur when batteries get damp or when they get cold and when they're, or when they're charged when they're cold. Right. So you want to keep moisture away from the cells and you want to stop them getting too cold while you're charging them. So if your battery has developed a crack, if it's been dropped, if you've been leaving it in somewhere very cold where humidity gets inside the battery, that's what's likely to start poisoning off the cells. Right. So I mean, we've even seen a, you know, a fairly big story break this week on um, one of the big US um, e-bike brands, yeah. um, where they're being asked to recall a huge amount of batteries for yeah. a very small amount of, of kind of actual incidents. Yeah. Now, this would not only be a great service to the, the end user, the, the owner of the bike, it'd be a huge benefit to that brand, wouldn't it, obviously? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one because the, 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 the safety regulators asking them to recall all the batteries they've basically sold in the last five years. Yeah. So that's batteries that are out of warranty as well as ones that are actually current. So if the later models are in theory safer, but it's all the older ones as well. Um, this would allow you to look at all of the, the batteries in that fleet to say these are the ones that we think might be starting to develop problems so maybe you only have to recall one percent of your total fleet and that that's something that manufacturers could could deal with but i think most manufacturers could not stand the cost and faff to recall <laughs> potentially millions of batteries yeah so it i think the the very small cost of adding this to a to a battery has potentially enormous benefits So, I mean, all that sounds really, really exciting. So where exactly are you at with Battery IQ right now? Great, well, we've got um, Boost are the first brand that have started to adopt Battery IQ in their batteries. Um, this is one that's got a little QR code on the battery itself, and we can take our phone and log into that and see all the cell voltages within that pack, um, see the humidity, uh, the temperature at various places, any yeah. alerts that are going on within the battery. So if, you've, if you're near to a battery, whether it's yours or someone else, you can always see if that battery is safe. Okay. But as the owner of it, you can of course get more information about yeah. the history of that battery. And so that, obviously that screen there is just showing this battery is in sort of rude health. Yeah. Um, what will actually happen if it finds an issue? Well, so the Do you get an says, alert? Or? Yeah, so we've got your battery is safe because that's the kind of key message we want. We want to tell the owner of the battery or the person that's standing near to it, right. is this, do we consider this battery safe enough to stand anywhere near or to use? Um, that's the key message. But if we start to see the cells drifting off or um, any other alerts that we pick up about the battery, this would be shown on the app. Right. And, and also you would get an email through as the owner of the battery okay. to say your battery has drifted into an area that we're not 
quite happy about. Right, and so that that sounds you know amazing for you know as a sort of personal user, etc. But you know you did talk about how this can be a real big benefit to the industry. So how does like that little app expand into say a warehouse full of batteries? Well, the, yeah, there are so. <laughs> this is one of those things you could you can kind of make up scenarios indefinitely for this, but the two that I like are if you if you're a manufacturer and you've got a a, a warehouse containers full of batteries, um, we can put a scanner on the wall and within, within a few seconds that scanner will scan all the batteries in the entire warehouse and give you a, a dashboard online of, of everything that's going on with all of those batteries. Right. So most manufacturers that we've spoken to admit that they don't really know what's happening with any of the batteries that are in their warehouses. They're just, they turned up from whoever made them, yeah. they're in a box which is sealed, they can't get into that battery. Um, whereas this gives you full visibility of everything. If a, if a corner of the warehouse is cold, if certain sections of batteries are flatter than they should be, that's stuff that you can pick up early on. I mean, that, aside from manufacturing then, I mean, this, this can expand into kind of almost like public spaces. Yep. You know, like bike hire schemes, yep. where all yep. those bikes are stored in one place, you could have a wall scanner, and then, you know, the, the people running that scheme know that that bike's safe, you know, every bike in the fleet's safe, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you, you get into scenarios like, um, those companies don't necessarily, or some of them don't know, how old their batteries are, what condition the batteries are in. So they can actually make significant savings by only um, end of life the batteries yeah. that are actually starting to show wear and tear. So there's a massive saving potential in just keeping batteries going for longer. And from a personal point of view, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, if battery IQ is rolled out outside of you know e-bikes and everything, you know, I can have a wall scanner at home and it's monitoring my e-bike, it's monitoring my phones, it's monitoring my power tools, it's monitoring well, basically anything that's got a battery in it, which is almost everything nowadays. You know, if I've got a little you know warning system at home that sort of says, hey, your you know, your old power drill that you've been using to, you know, not pitch your hooks in <laughs> um, isn't isn't very happy in your garage, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean that's a really interesting scenario. Um, we think that this has applications in power tools as well, so we have started talking to power tool manufacturers. Um, we've actually got a project with the European Space Agency because there's, <laughs> there's actually no European-made battery management system for, um, that's use, useful for satellites at the moment. Okay. So we we actually potentially could end up with this technology in space as well. Wow. So that was a bit of a random uh, aside. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of companies, and, and this goes back to a point you made about if I had 12 different brands of bikes, all of the companies that have this kind of technology, they they try and keep it within their brand so that it promotes their own particular brand. The point of this is that it's cross industry, that that basically any any manufacturer that can demonstrate they are safe enough is welcome to use this standard and embed it in their batteries. Yeah. So you can genuinely have 12 different brands all, all compatible with the system and all reporting into it. Yeah. You, as the expert, can you give us your top tips for battery life, battery longevity, healthcare, and above all, safety? Yeah, I think I've been thinking about this. What would be the sort of the easy way of understanding how to treat batteries? So batteries don't like being undercharged, um, overcharged, um, under temperature, or over temperature. <laughs> <laughs> so they like living in this, this nice circle of happy, not too far in any particular direction. So don't let your batteries get too flat, um, and especially don't get them, let them get too flat when they're cold, that's particularly bad for them. Right. Um, don't let them get too hot, and that can also happen if you overcharge them, so then you're drifting in sort of over temperature and overcharge at the same time. And also, if you're gonna charge them, use the charger that you were given with that battery. So don't go too kind of Wild West in whatever you right. can find on eBay. So yeah, if them. you've lost your charger, etc., etc., don't just go and find the cheapest. The cheapest thing you can find. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, battery IQ is interesting in that it it actually won't initiate charging unless it likes the look of the charger that's plugged into it. Right. So most brands you can kind of force energy into them and they'll sort of accept it. Um, but yes, those are my sort. That's my sort of happy window of battery. Yeah. Don't push it too far in any direction. So we're coming into winter at the moment. First thing to do is to make sure your batteries do actually stay at least 40 to 60% charge over the winter. So if you're storing a bike, um, the last thing you want to do is leave your bike in a shed for four months over the winter and expect it to suddenly work in, in March. So yeah, keep your batteries charged and also try and keep them above 10 degrees if you can. Hey. Well, there are, th there are things not obvious as well. Like if you've got a battery sitting behind your bottle mounts, 
you can't just put massively long screws into your bottle mounts because that could actually go into your battery. Right. So <laughs> there is a degree <laughs> of care required. But yeah, I've heard of um, people who do x-ray examinations of batteries where they've got problems. And yeah, they, they often have batteries that have been used as hammers and they can see dents in the actual cells where people have used them against the <laughs> nail. So that's the kind of thing that people do with these batteries. And most of the time they do survive. So they're, they're pretty tough. Yeah. But there's a lot of energy there if it's fully charged, if the whole thing does actually fail. So although it's fairly unlikely, once a battery does fail, the, the results can be quite dramatic. Well, thanks, Nick. That's been really, really interesting. And thanks so much for all those top tips on keeping our e-bikes healthy and batteries in check. And I'm really excited to see where battery IQ goes. Well, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave your comments below. And if you want more great content, there's some more here.